Hello my friends, Hank here, and today we are talking all about Zimmerit. If you're at all interested in modeling German tanks from World War II, then sooner or later you're going to encounter Zimmerit. And if you want to make your Panzers as historically accurate as possible, it's essential to figure out how to replicate this iconic technology on your small scale kits. So in this video, we're going to learn a little bit about what Zimmerit is, and then we're going to check out a simple and cost effective technique for applying Zimmerit to your scale models. With that said, my friends, let's hop right into it. All right, so some of you might be wondering, what on earth is this Zimmerit business? So a quick two minute history lesson for you. And if you really want to skip ahead to the tutorial, you can, but be a good student, stick around. You never know when you might learn something new. So if you've ever seen photos of a German tank or other armored vehicle from World War II with all these weird bumpy lines all over the armor, that is Zimmerit. And it's essentially a non-magnetic paste. So why do we have a non-magnetic paste all over our tanks? Well, in 1942, the German army started using an anti-tank grenade or an anti-tank mine that was so eloquently nicknamed the Panzernacker. And this was essentially just a big explosive attached to some really strong magnets. So your average, albeit very brave, infantryman could run up to an enemy tank, donk, stick that magnetic grenade on there, pull a pin, and run like hell. And the Germans are concerned, of course, that if they have some of these, then the enemy could easily make their own or capture some of their own. So to protect against these kinds of magnetic grenades, the Germans came up with Zimmerit. This special paste is a combination of barium, zinc, wood glue, and even some sawdust. And it goes in little bumps and ridges on the outside of the armor, and then it's fire hardened. And once that Zimmerit is on there, those surfaces of the tank are no longer magnetic. So from the winter of 1943 through to the fall of 1944, Nearly all German tanks, tank destroyers, and self-propelled guns are coated with Zimmerit before they leave the factory. Funny enough though, the Germans were pretty much the only troops that used magnetic mines in any great numbers during World War II, so the Zimmerit didn't really amount to much. In September of 1944, orders are given to stop putting Zimmerit on tanks in the factory, primarily because there was some concern that the paste was extra flammable, which turns out it wasn't, and also because it just took extra production time when replacement tanks were desperately needed by the Panzer divisions. So regardless of its usefulness, Zimmerit has become synonymous with mid-war German armor. Thousands upon thousands of Panzer threes, fours, Panthers, Tigers, Tiger twos, Stugs, and many, many more received this stuff. So there you have it, a crash course on Zimmerit. Now let's get to making some, shall we? All right, my friends, let's get to work. So as I mentioned in the intro, today we're going to be looking at what I think is the easiest and most beginner-friendly method for replicating Zimmerit. And that's going to be by using these prefabricated sticker sets from Tamiya. For pretty much all of the Tamiya models depicting vehicles that would have historically been coated in Zimmerit, Tamiya offers a set of these great 3D Zimmerit stickers. They only cost around $10, which is a steal and a real time saver when it comes to replicating this product. I'll include a list down in the description below of the vehicles that would have had Zimmerit and the accompanying Zimmerit sticker sheets if you want to pick some up and follow along at home. For today's demo, I'll be putting Zimmerit on this late war Panzer IV J, but the techniques apply to all of these vehicles. Each one of these sticker packs is going to come with an instruction sheet to show you which stickers go where on the tank, and it's really important to pay close attention to this. We'll start out here with step one on our kit supplied instructions, which leads to a very important point right off the bat when using these stickers. And that is to apply them to your base part before you add any additional parts or subassemblies. As we build out our model and start adding subassemblies, it gets harder and harder to fit these stickers on. So the best practice is to apply them to the base parts before you build them up too much. To use these stickers, all we've got to do is follow along the outline on our Zimmerit section and very carefully cut out the sticker with a sharp hobby knife. I'd recommend grabbing a fresh blade before doing this to ensure that you're getting super clean cuts. Once we're done cutting, we can remove the sticker and the backing from the main sticker sheet. And it's a good practice to do a little test fit before actually going ahead and adhering the sticker just to make sure that everything lines up nicely. Check twice because it's hard to adjust once the sticker is applied. Once you're comfortable with the fit, remove the backing from the sticker. I try to start with an easily defined shape, like this return roller bracket right here, to line up the sticker as close to perfect as I can. From there, you can work your way along the length of the sticker and fit it into place as called out on the instruction sheet. These stickers do have a little bit of give, so you can stretch them to fit as necessary. Once applied, go along the length of the sticker and press it onto the kit as securely as possible. If there's a little bit of overhang with the sticker, that's totally okay. We can take our hobby knife and very carefully trim off the excess. And we're going to go along through our kit provided instruction booklet and start applying Zimmerit to all the big sections of the tank where it's called out. 
Cut out the sticker, fit it into place, apply, and then press out any bubbles or loose attachments. All right, so some of our Zimmerit stickers are gonna go over parts of the model that have exposed rivets and other small protrusions. For these, you can carefully drill out the holes with the end of your knife by twisting it like so. These holes don't have to be super clean, but just open enough so that you can fit them into position on the model kit. Some Zimmerit sections are very tight, specific fits, so just be careful, go slow, and try and have fun with it. Using the back of your knife to help jostle the stickers into position around seams and edges can be very helpful as well. And as you go along with your build, you're going to start to get an idea of how the Zimmerit is supposed to look once the rest of the sub-assemblies go up around it. And fast forward, here's our Panzer IV all built up with all of the Zimmerit applied. It looks pretty great, right? If you want to build up a Panzer model that would have had Zimmerit application, this Tamiya setup is a great way to go about it. Straightforward, no fuss, and it doesn't break the bank. And here's another Tamiya kit, their Panther D, all painted up with the Zimmerit stickers applied. This adds a world of detail, and honestly, it's a blast to use as well. So as I mentioned before, I'll include a list down in the description below of all the Tamiya kits and the Zimmerit packs that are available for them. And be sure to stay tuned right here to Spruce and Bruce Scale Modeling for part two of this Zimmerit series, where we're going to check out a more advanced method for scratch building Zimmerit by hand if you don't want to use the stickers. Until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.